actually going fishing today. He's not got out of the bed yet, but he's going fishing later in the afternoon. Well, I think they're going to leave about 11 because the tide um, changes about one o'clock. And there's no sense in them getting out early this morning when it's cold because they're probably not going to catch anything. Um, I have been studying the Word of God all morning. I had to make myself stop so I could do Bible study. <laughs> um, I have so enjoyed it and I uh, have learned quite a few things this morning. And God is so good. He is amazing. It is just amazing what we can learn if we dive into the Word of God. Um, I have wrote down the prayer request from yesterday, and I had um, somebody tell me a couple of things. I wrote down some notes. We'll go over those. Um, I've, of course, got my show and tell today, and so I hope y'all are ready to have fun. I'm looking through my notes. I have my notebook today. Yesterday I didn't. I'm sorry about that. And um, so I just want to tell everybody good morning. Happy Thursday. I love my glasses so much that I'm going to swap that green pair for another pair of these in pink um, because they're so comfortable. Um, I have, I think I put it on yesterday's. I put the link for my eyewear on yesterday's post. This frame is called GEM, G-E-M, and it's on iBuyDirect.com. That's E-Y-E-B-E-Y-D-I-R-E-C-T.com, iBuyDirect.com. And I don't get a commission or anything to sell their glasses. I actually tried, and they turned me down, but that was quite a while ago, so I should try again because I love their product, and I don't mind pushing products that I love. Thanks to all of y'all who went into the Rata site through my website and placed an order yesterday. I had lots of great comments about their products. Yes, everything they have is lifetime warranted, and I'm super excited about pushing their products. Now, somebody had asked me yesterday, do you make money off of people buying these knives? And I said, absolutely, I do. So the, the way that it works is when you enter through their web, into their website through my link, I get a commission for you uh, buying from them. Now, it doesn't cost you any more money. And that's what people don't understand. Either you're going to give the money to Rada, all of it, or you can give a small portion to Colored Valley Cooks. And I try to use the money that we make on Colored Valley Cooks for good things. You know, I don't just blow it. Um you can tell me and Chris don't live real frivolous and spend a whole lot of money. and But I like to put money back into my kitchen. So I bought just about everything Rada had. And no, um, I didn't get it free. They they told me that I would have to buy it through the link, just like y'all would buy through the link. And then I would make a commission on what I buy, just like I make a commission on what y'all buy. So I thought I'd explain that to y'all this morning. Um, and that's how it works. So... I just wanted, I mean, I've been, I've been recommending that y'all purchase products since I started Colored Valley Cooks. That's one of the first things I learned how to do is show you guys how to get the things that I have in the kitchen. And um, so that's just part of being a social uh, entertainer or video maker or whatever you want to call it. Um some people have a hard time understanding why we want to make money for something that we're doing for fun. And can I say it's still a job, kind of, and why not if you can, right? So I like to recommend products that I use because I like those products. And why not recommend something American made if I can? So I'm super excited about it. Enough about that. I had lots of people go in yesterday and purchase. So I just want to say thank you for that. Um now, oh, for my show and tell today, I'm going to show y'all, this thing is kind of, let me, let me fix this. I didn't mean to turn the light on. Okay. All right. See my hair today. I've got on my favorite hair piece. So I was going to show y'all my favorite hair piece. 
Um, if you've got hair long enough to tie it up in a bun or, you know, in something on top of your head, then you can use one of these. Okay. Um, all I do, I want y'all to see the difference. Okay. So what I do is I take it and I put it on my arm and I use a brush <clears throat> and I brush it. <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm hoarse this morning. Um, and I brush it out like that. And then I just place it on my head. Now, um, you can double it so that it's tight on your head or you can take some of the hair and use a couple of clips like uh, bobby pins is what I use and kind of, you know, make sure so it don't fall off while you're doing whatever you're doing. But isn't it cute? <clears throat> now this, I gave you the link to, if your hair's long enough to do that, it's only $8.99, $8.99, and it comes in all different colors. Now this one's a lighter color than my the last color I used on my hair, but it's really nice. Um, so y'all can take a look at those. Those are one of my favorite things that I like to do. You thought I went to the salon. See how easy that is? I can get ready, no kidding, in less than 10 minutes. It takes me about five minutes to do my makeup for real. That's it. And it takes me about three minutes to do my hair. And I wear these all the time because look how much better I look with it on. It's crazy not to wear them. It's crazy not to wear them. And I want to say this to y'all because you were my friends. And I don't know if whoever said this to me watches this Bible study. But I'm going to say this. I'll always get on the inside, you know, the scoop. One time I had somebody send me a message. And Chris read it to me. Let me get a drink of coffee. I had somebody send me a message that said, for Christmas, I got a Tammy doll. My Tammy doll did not wear makeup. She did not wear powders on her face and wear fancy clothes etc and she went on to explain how her Tammy doll didn't do all of this <clears throat> and I thought to myself really so what she was trying to say is that she felt like I guess that me putting on my makeup and putting on a hairpiece oh she said her Tammy doll didn't wear wigs <clears throat> was not me can I say when I first started my show in 2017, I had a pixie cut. It was very short. I wore wigs all the time. I loved wigs. I learned how to wear wigs when I had cancer, and I thought they were so much fun. I just liked to wear them. And <clears throat> so you never knew if I was going to be blonde or red or brown brunette for the day. When I first started my show, and a lot of people thought that it was sisters because the hair changed. They didn't know it was the same person. But anyway, I was surprised that she would say that. <laughs> and um, so now sometimes when I'm getting in there and getting dressed, I think, oh my goodness, my teeny doll, which is goofy. But I thought to myself, really? What woman doesn't want to look pretty sometimes? And what woman doesn't want to fix her hair sometimes? Now, there's times when I don't. And there's times when y'all see me on camera that I don't have a stitch of makeup on and I haven't fixed my hair and I, you know, haven't got on fancy clothes and I'm barefooted in the kitchen. And then there's some times when I take 10 minutes to fix my face and put on a hairpiece. <laughs> and um, either way, it's me. That's the fun part about um, being me is I can do whatever I want to. And so if I want to get dressed one day, I get dressed. And if I don't want to get dressed one day, I don't. And I don't worry about y'all seeing me when I look all that bad. Now, Chris does video me. I'm not going to lie. On his Nichols Empire, he picks the worst days to turn on his camera and video me. And he wonders why sometimes I'm not in the best of moods when he videos me. And I'm like, really? 
you want to video me now? But anyway, enough of that. I just thought I'd tell y'all that. Um, because it was crazy. I mean, to me, that's crazy. Like, like I'm a puppet on a string or something, really. Um, I found something in my pantry that was expired. And I picked it up and I was going to tell y'all why I like, like to grape jam, J-A-M, jam. And then I realized it was jelly. And I thought, well, I don't ever use grape jelly. And then I looked at the date on this jelly and it's dated 2016. So that means we moved it from Dallas, Georgia. And somehow, some way, I didn't see the expiration date because I tried to get rid of everything old and not move it. Why did I let this jelly expire? Because I don't like jelly. The only kind of jelly I like is apple. Um, when I make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I use grape jam, J-A-M, because it's thick and it spreads so easy on the bread and it's so delicious with your peanut butter. But jelly is jiggly and wiggly and it's hard to spread on the bread unless it's toasted, which I don't toast peanut butter and jelly. Now, my mama would make toast, and she would spread jelly on her toast and peanut butter. And you can spread jelly on toast, but you can't spread jelly on bread that's not toasted very well. So now you know why I have expired jelly. Apparently, Chris picked this up at the store, and it was never opened. I'm going to put it in the trash today. I could probably make something out of it, but it's not going to kill me. It probably only cost about a dollar fifty, and it has been expired for quite some time. It says it's America's number one grape jelly. Well, can I say I love Welch's grape juice? Love it, and I love Welch's jam, but I don't like jelly. That was my show and tell for the day. <laughs> Yeah, sweet and sour meatballs. Mama used to put jelly in those too, Betty. I did sweet and sour meatballs for you guys, and I didn't put jelly in it. It's in my last cookbook. I don't remember what I put in it. Let me look if it's sitting here. Let's look and see what I put in my meatballs. I think I made this after my cookbook. Maybe I made it before. Um, I think I might have made it after. I did. Y'all have to go back. I don't know what I put in them. I can't remember. But I chose not to use jelly. I think I might have used cranberry sauce. Let's look it up right quick. CVC. Sweet. Oh, I'm just going to put meatballs. Meatballs. Now, look. A lot of y'all send me messages and say, Tammy, where do I find your meatball recipe, your meatloaf recipe, etc.? I have to do the exact thing, same thing that you would do because there's hundreds of videos and I don't have some magic wand I can like, you know, and find the video any better than you can find the video. So what I do is go on to Google. And the reason I say Google is because Google is the search engine that I use. And Google will find my stuff like that if you go into Bing or any of the other ones. You're going to have a hard time finding my stuff. It's going to find it, but not near as good as Google because everything I use is through Google. Um, I use Google AdSense. I use Google products. I use the search engine. That's what I use. So if you want to find my stuff, go to Google search, type it in. I just type, type that in. If the videos are at the top, it says Italian meatballs with fresh pasta sauce, Mama's cocktail meatballs, Meatball Surprise, and How We Make Meatballs in Gravy. That's my top four meatball videos, okay? So it's that simple. And when you click on the video, um, then you can look at the description post. Most of the time you have to say show more and click it, and you can see the recipe. I did. I used cranberry sauce in mine. My meatballs have uh, the sirloin. Eggs, onion flakes, pepper, ketchup, corn flakes, parsley flakes, soy sauce, salt, 
jelly cranberry sauce, which I love, um, lemon juice, chili sauce, and brown sugar. That's what mine have in them. But now, I, when I was a kid, Mama catered, and I remember her using the jelly uh, very much so. So I didn't use Mama's recipe. Sorry, I didn't. I decided I would change it. Um, sometimes I don't always use Mama's recipes. Okay. Try search duck, duck, go. Does it find my stuff, Regina? Because I've never used it, but I'll check it out. Duck, duck, go. I'll go to duck, duck, go, type in CBC meatballs and see if it pulls up all four videos. Okay, if it don't, then you know Google does a better job. Okay. Um, i got quite a few things on my to-do list today. But first, we're going to talk about our prayer requests from yesterday. Um, if you're new, welcome to Real Southern Woman, where we love God and we're not ashamed to say it. It's great to have you this morning on a Thursday morning. We always do lately a show and tell first, and then we dive into devotion of the day, and we use blueletterbible.org. So everybody can go there, and we use Charles Spurgeon's morning and morning devotion every day except Sunday. I take Sunday off because uh, Sunday I listen to my brother preach at Collard Valley Baptist Church, and that is online too on Facebook if you ever want to take a look. Um, and he has been struggling with his volume and his technology over the last few weeks, so y'all just bear with him. And eventually he'll get it just right. But it takes time. He don't have, it's not a big church, and he don't have some technical guru to help him. And so he does the best he can, my brother. Okay, so I'm going to read out the few prayer requests that we had. There's not that many from yesterday. If you have one, uh, tell us what it is. I used to list all of them, but I don't have that much room in the description post. So now I'm putting... A study in the description post um, and then if there's something I'm showing y'all for the day and there's a link to it I show it to you um, but these are the ones that came in yesterday Patricia Fairfax said her sister-in-law had a stroke and she's in the hospital and wants us to keep her in prayer Heather Demaro is still having a lot of back pain and she wants to keep us in her prayer in our prayers keep her in our prayers Lena Grider has a lot of health problems, and so um, she's asked for prayer. Gail Ro Roops um, is having a lot of knee pain. Lisa Mobley's neighbors have COVID. Nan Bixby's daughter had surgery yesterday. Amy, who had surgery several weeks ago, uh, got staff. And just had surgery to cut all that out. And she was sewn back up two days ago. Please keep her in your prayers. Tina uh, Rocco, Rocco, I don't know if I'm saying that right, had her epidural yesterday. So hopefully she will do well. Let's keep her in our prayers. Kat Yorba is having physical therapy for her back. And she's hoping to get some relief. And Janet Moss um I think it was her cousin's son, regardless of who it is to her. His name is Jason. He has COVID and has double pneumonia. And she and is in the hospital, and she wants us to keep him in our prayers. And um, that is the prayer requests that I got yesterday. So let's all keep them in our prayers. Here we try to pray for each other, lift each other up. Um, and be an encouragement to each other. We don't want to be discouraging or um, judgmental or anything like that. We want to love on each other, encourage each other, lift each other up, and hold each other. Um, as sisters and brothers in Christ, we should do that, okay? So that's what we try to do on this channel. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it for prayer requests today. So now we will dive right in 
to Charles Spurgeon's daily devotion, his morning reading. Now at night when you go to bed or right before you go to bed, if you want to open up the Blue Letter Bible and read his evening reading, you'll get a blessing out of that as well. And um, it's a great resource. What I love about Blue Letter, Letter Bible is that everything's right at your fingertips, the scripture, the commentary, the dictionaries. I mean, you can study the Word of God. It is amazing. I've been using it for years. And I typically, um, I'm very thankful for it. And you can actually donate to them because they do provide such a wonderful service for free to everybody. I mean, it's not mandatory, but if you want to give to something that really helps people and fellow Christians, um, it's a good resource to give to. All right, we're going to go to February 4th this morning reading. It's Charles Haddon Spurgeon, wonderful man of God. It says, The Love of the Lord, Hosea 3, chapter 1. Believer, look back through all thine experience and think of the way whereby the Lord thy God has led thee in the wilderness. Now, the wilderness is here pretty much. Not just here, but, you know, like the children of Israel got stuck in the wilderness for 40 days and I mean, not 40 days, 40 years, I think. They were just stuck in the wilderness, and they couldn't seem to cross that promised land. And a lot of people think the promised land is salvation, but it's not. Um, they were already the people of God. The promised land is living an abundant life through Christ Jesus. So if you're saved, um, and you've been saved by the blood of Jesus, you can be in the wilderness because you're not reading the Word of God, studying the Word of God, praying, and your relationship isn't close with Jesus Christ. Therefore, your life doesn't seem to be full of joy and abundance. Okay? That is the wilderness. All right? And we've all been in the wilderness. And you may be in the wilderness right now. And we come and go out of the wilderness, actually, uh, because there's many times that we're closer to the Lord than other times. So he's saying, believer, look back through all that experience and think of the way whereby the Lord thy God has led thee in the wilderness and how he hath fed and clothed thee every day and how he hath borne and carried with thine ill manners, how he hath put up with all of thy murmurings and all of thy longings after the flesh pots of Egypt, which foolish things, I guess, fleshly desires um, how he has opened the rock to supply thee and fed thee with manna that came down from heaven think of how his grace has been sufficient for thee in all thy troubles how his blood has been a pardon forgiveness to thee in all of thy sins and how his rod and staff have comforted thee. Now his rod and staff is when he punishes us or teaches us lessons, lessons because we're not uh, living in his will. And they do comfort us because sometimes as children of God, we have to learn the hard way. And when we learn the hard way, it's a lot easier to remember what put us there so that we don't do it again, right? So his staff has comforted us. And when thou hast looked back upon the love of the Lord, then let faith survey his love in the future. For remember that Christ's covenant, his promise, and blood have something more in them than the past. He who has loved thee and pardoned, forgiven thee, shall never cease to love and pardon. He shall never cease to love and forgive. He is Alpha, the beginning, and he shall be Omega, the end. Also, he is first and he shall be last. Therefore, think thee, when thou shalt pass through the valley of the shadow of death, 
Thou needest fear no evil, for he is with thee. When thou shalt stand in the cold floods of Jordan, thou needest not fear, for death cannot separate thee from his love. And when thou shalt come into the mysteries of eternity, thou needest not tremble. And this is coming from scripture. And let me reference the scripture for y'all because it's not in here where it's referenced. But I wrote it down today when I was studying. Romans chapter 8, verse 38. Okay? It says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now soul, is not thy love refreshed? Does not this make thee love Jesus? Doth not a flight through limitless plains of the either of love arouse thy heart and compel thee to delight thyself in the Lord thy God. Surely we, surely as we meditate on the love of the Lord, our hearts burn within us and we long to love him more. Isn't that beautiful? Um, the love of the Lord is way bigger than us, right? And that should give us comfort and keep us going through so much. Um, just thinking about how much he loves us and how much he keeps us and how nothing can pull us away from him is amazing that he's preserved us um, through his precious blood. I pray that if you do not know Jesus Christ, and you've not trusted in him as your personal savior for your sin, I pray that today would be the day of salvation for you and that you would understand that all of us are born in sin and we all need forgiveness and we all need a savior. And it is up to us whether or not we receive the gift, the free gift through grace of salvation. Um, this is not a salvation message, but I just thought I'd throw that in. So I pray that your soul is with him, preserved and sealed to the day of redemption. And if it's not, I know that it's God's will that you would become a son of God. For it is his will that all come to know him and repent and be saved okay i hope y'all have a wonderful day i'm glad you joined us on real southern woman and i look forward to seeing you on friday morning where we all love god and we're not ashamed to say it may we proclaim jesus christ and tell others of his wonderful love and grace all right so leave your prayer requests and I'll write them down and read them tomorrow. And let's pray for each other and love on each other. I'm so glad that you're all here today. It's great to see you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. The, lo the love that you've shown us by giving your only son for our sacrifice. We thank you that your son loved us so much that he would do your will that we may all become the children of God and have eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. Not anything that we have done as your word says, but all because of him. May we all praise and glorify God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
because we ourselves are not worthy. May we see who we really are compared to who God is so that we know how much we need him. May your will be done in all of these prayer requests and in our lives. Help us each day as we study your word, as we become friends on this site. Help us to love each other, encourage each other, and lift each other up. May we all be united as one through you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all have a wonderful and blessed Thursday. Chris will be fishing today. I plan, I hope, to get in the kitchen today and do something fun. Um, I have decided pretty much that I'm a lot like my Granny B was. I don't know about Charles Granny B or your Granny. <laughs> but Granny got up at the crack of dawn and she made breakfast. Then she went out to the garden while it was still cool outside and she worked outside. Then she came into the house and prepared a nice large lunch, which we called dinner. And for supper, she always had leftovers for the most part. So Granny used the majority of her energy from dawn until noon, or two or three o'clock the most. And that seems to when I be when I have most of my energy because by four or five o'clock when it's time to cook supper, I'm dragging. And it's a lot harder for me to pull out a video camera and want a video when I'm dragging than it is when I create videos when I'm still feeling good in the morning. Um, so I'm really thinking about doing like Granny used to do and starting to make nice big lunches, whether Chris is here or not, and then having leftovers for supper. You can always fry up a piece of meat to go with it later. That only takes a few minutes. So just thought I'd throw that out there with y'all today. But I've been thinking on it. Y'all have a wonderful Thursday. We'll see you in the morning. Bye. Love you.